Okay, um, so first of all, good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Janine Koch from Aalto University and I'm presenting our work on May I today. With this work, we present a collaborative agent that works together with a designer to find inspirational material by using a recent interactive machine learning approach called Cooperative Contextual Bandits, which we evaluated with designers. But before I present our work, I would like to talk about the underlying process of ideation and design practice. Ideation is the process of generating and curating original and useful ideas so as to define and explore what is desirable in a design project. Especially visual material is considered to be most suitable to support the construction of new ideas and concepts that are especially hard to express and define verbally. One common method within visual ideation is the collection of inspirational material in form of collars, also called mood boards. In this dynamic and iterative process, the designers switch between searching and making, and the final collage can help to reflect and communicate new concepts and ideas. In the traditional way of constructing mood boards, designers go through their own idea repositories or previous work they associate with the current work which reflects the ability to exploit material which is already known to the designer. In addition, designers commonly browse magazines or other sources of inspiration, like art and nature, which enables them to express new ideas and concepts outside their initial idea space. Through the collaboration with others and consideration of their ideas, designers then construct a new understanding that might go beyond their own interpretation, which is usually referred to as collaborative creativity. Now, the shift from a physical to a more digital process enables designers to broaden their inspirational sources through large sets of inspirational images online. However, to retrieve these images, designers have to use search engine, which require them to express ideas in the making to actually find this material. Finding explorative and serendipitous material becomes challenging using this rigid search paradigm, and collaboration becomes limited due to the separation of search per person. So, with that in mind, we wondered how could an AI act as a collaborative agent to support exploitation and exploration of digital visual material together with a designer to harness the machine's abilities to retrieve and analyze large amount of data by, and by valuing the contextual knowledge of the designer in the process. Many HCI studies have looked so far at later stage design processes, which are more goal-oriented and often have predefined goals or at least a clearer understanding of goal criteria. Approaches used here are, for example, predictive algorithms or optimization to improve or enhance already existing design materials towards a desired goal. But... Ideation is by definition the process of defining these goal variables and relevant criteria for a given problem or task. Because of that, the objective of such a design task are constantly evolving and therefore require more process-oriented approaches. Previous work on AI-supported ideation has used adaptive or interactive algorithms, for example in the context of drawing, dance, or music improvisation. So in order to create a collaborative agent for ideation, we define that such a system should first understand the designer's current strategy to suggest inspirational and situationally relevant material. It should also facilitate collaboration by making its own decisions, by exploiting the current visual idea or exploring new visual alternatives by itself while adapting to the designer's style over time as done in a human-to-human -human collaboration. And finally, to facilitate grounding within this collaboration, such an agent has to be able to provide explanations for its suggestions and also ask for reasoning of the designer's choices. So with that in mind, we introduce MayI, a bandit-based collaborative AI agent that is able to exploit and explore digital inspirational material together with a designer on the task of mood board design. 
So here's a quick example of what it can do. The MAI tool collects inspirational images along with the designer, as if it were a collaborator in the project. The agent constantly suggests images based on its own judgment and on the current mood board, and can also answer specific requests from the designer. A live search engine on the left allows the designer to find images as in a normal digital design process. While each suggestion of the MAI agent considers this designer's searches in all images on the current mood board, a suggestion itself consists of an image, an explanation, and a history where images are stored chronologically and can be retrieved on a later stage. So now we have seen from a user's perspective how a designer can search for her own material using a traditional search engine and how the MAI agent can suggest images based on the current canvas. Now let's have a closer look at the AI suggestions and especially at how it retrieves the suggested images and how it justifies its suggestion to the designer. So let's look at an abstract example of a very simple mood board with two green instruments on a white background. In order to search for a suitable suggestion, the AI has to consider the visual features and, and the content of the future image based on the current mood board. First, we look at how it analyzes and selects the visual features. In order to do so, we applied a, a cooperative contextual bandit algorithm in the context of visual ideation. A crucial requirement of this type of algorithm is to select a set of features that together express a point in the creative space. Based on professional mood boards, we distinguish five visual features, which in combination can describe any mood board, which are color, brightness, saturation, colorfulness, and the orientation of images. Given this five-dimensional space, we slice it uniformly into subspaces based on human perception. In our example, the green mood board would be, for example, assigned to a bright green, high contrast subspace. Given this assignment, the algorithm has a probability function to exploit the same visual space, possibly with minor deviations. For example, in our case, this could be another bright green image. Or it can decide for a neighboring subspace representing a distinct shift, for instance, in color or contrast, which represents an exploration in the visual space. For example, a black and white image. These probability functions are trained over time, allowing the system to consider the personal preferences of its collaborators as part of its decisions. A common issue with online learning approaches, and especially in contextual bandits, is the so-called cold start problem. This means that in the beginning, all options are equally probable, and it takes a lot of training for it to develop a meaningful behavior. In order to overcome these limitations, we collected 1,024 mood boards online from a diverse set of topics and domains. We segmented each of these mood boards to retrieve individual images and simulated their reconstruction, which became then the AI's prior. So, now that we saw how the bandit system selects whether to exploit or explore visual material, Let's discuss how the AI selects the content presented on the suggested image. This is defined by the searches of the designer and the application of a semantic association engine. Based on the designer's behavior, this content space is updated and also previous content will be forgotten over time to continuously provide meaningful suggestions related to the current process and mood board. In our example, the designer might have searched for something like instruments earlier, which then is then observed by the association engine and can result in words like piano, music, or entertainment. This content is then combined with the visual features selected earlier and search live in the background. 
An image that fulfills both criteria is selected as the final suggestion of the AI. In our example case, this could be a green piano or a black and white radio, depending on the decision made by the earlier presented bandit system. The selected image is then tested for its most meaningful characteristics, given the current mood board. For example, how it nicely complements it or represents the current theme well. The characteristic is provided as an explanation for the designer above the image. The steering buttons underneath allow the designer to further communicate her current preferences in the form of more like the current mood board, similar to the current suggestion but something different, or it should be more surprising overall. This button impact the probabilities considered by the AI for, ex for selecting an exploitation or exploration behavior. So, to summarize, MayAI is a collaborative AI tool that enables designers to exploit and explore while designing mood boards. We tested the system with 16 professional designers with backgrounds in graphic design, architecture, fashion design, and others. All of them had a minimum of two years design practice and used mood boards before in their career. We counterbalanced the two conditions, namely with and without the help of the AI suggestions, and evaluated these conditions using questionnaires and interviews. As task, we provided two realistic design briefs, containing a client and a task description, regarding a new visual concept for a grocery store line focusing on vegetarian lifestyle, and a youth program for millennials for a new banking system. Each participant had 30 minutes per task and condition to build a mood board. Now, in the end, the vast majority of participants preferred working with the AI than without. In their final mood boards, about a quarter of the used images were suggested by the AI. Questionnaires revealed that the participants found the AI conditions more complex, which was expected due to the added information functionality of the system. However, they also revealed an overall increase in the perceived ability of the system to let the user explore and express themselves. In the ana analysis of the interviews, we focused on the three main abilities of the AI mentioned earlier. First, to provide inspirational material that goes beyond the direct search ability of the designer. Second, the explainability provided by the system that should enable better understanding of its decision. And third, the perception of the collaboration and agency in the context of interacting with the system. Regarding inspiration, users reported the suggestions as novel without being too eccentric or useless. They also told of being surprised by some of the suggestions, even reported aha moments in insights that led them to change their approach to the task drastically. Looking at the explainability of the AI, some designers highlighted the usefulness of the explanation also for their own consideration in future image selection. However, three participants even felt as if they were criticized or judged by the system when it asked for justification of the image choices they made. And finally, the interaction with the AI tool were commented on with attributions of agency and even personality, such as an eccentric collaborator or a she by more than half of the participants. Strong ascribing of collaborative and helping behavior led to perceptions of mixed agency, such as I feel like I don't work alone, I feel like there is another person working with me on this mood board. To summarize, inspirational activities are adaptive and evolve within the ideation process. To assist designers with these early inspirational phases, we have to move away from traditional goal-oriented AI approaches and towards systems that can adapt and collaborate with the designer. 
We introduce a cooperative contextual bandit approach in the context of mood board design that is able to make its own decisions to either explore or exploit the creative space, following or diverging from the designer's current strategy in order to assist and inspire as an independent creative agent. So that concludes my talk, and thank you for your attention. For the interested audience, we will release the code of the, for the cooperative contextual bandit, the design briefs, and the participants' mood boards at the link up here. I will now take questions while some of the outcomes of our studies will be shown behind me. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. Our student volunteer will go around the room, give you the microphone. Hi, Louis. Um, thank you, uh, Louis from OMU. Thank you for that really nice talk. I'd just like to ask if um, you have intention to be looking at a convergence of the end result of your 16 designers for similarities and maybe to contrast that if they wouldn't actually be using your system instead and use their traditional methods? That is a very good question. Um, so there is, there is, of course, a difference between um, using such a system and using the traditional material. We, we purposely didn't uh, compare the traditional way with the system because the traditional way usually has, uh, contains several different types of tools and also the ability to actually work with these tools. So we actually uh, trained the designer first with some of the functionalities of the tool so that we can actually compare them in the end. The comparison between the mood boards itself in the end is actually quite um, challenging because what it actually represents in the end of the mood board is mainly up to the designer and also the designer's viewpoint on the current task. So while this actually um, cannot be uh, compared in how the mood boards are actually end up, we would need longer studies to actually see how this impacts the final product or the final design in this case to actually see the, the real impact on a longer term. Hi, Bull Brackenberry, University of Chicago. <laughs> Love to talk, thank you. So, did you guys get the chance to explore the possibility of active learning to deal with the cold start problem? Um, Yes, we, we thought about it, but um, in the context of this work, um, we actually wanted to have like um, a, as broad set as possible to um, to kind of like pre-train the algorithm with a diverse set of domains, because as we have here um, also tested our system, the fashion designers, graphic designers, architects, uh, active learning would have limited us a little bit more to specific domain. So collecting this large set of mood boards from different domains with different purposes allowed us to have a more general sense of like the visual um, preferences of designers in this context. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more question. Meanwhile, I have the next speaker. Hi, uh, Jürgen Siegler, University of Duisburg, Essen. I was interested how you select the features to be used in the, in the process or whether the system can actually also adapt to the features that are preferred by the particular designer. Yeah, so the initial feature set was um, decided by me and... Um, my collaborators who uh, use for a long, longer time or research for a longer time mood boards and try to find um, features that we can distinguishly see among different mood boards. Um, so the probability distributions are related to um, the connection of um, certain aspects in this visual space. So basically, if you, if you would use the system over time, the probability functions would update in a way that you actually, uh, that it would actually reflect your preferences, for example, in colors, then actually, for example, in, in the way it, the saturation is presented or so. So this could be trained over time, um, but it not actively can diminish certain factors of that. There is, in the initial work of cooperative contextual bandits, a way to actually do that uh, instead of doing uniform slicing, doing adaptive slicing, which is also explained in the paper. 
um, we purposely went away here to actually give like a larger set um, of possibilities and explorative um, possibilities in this process.